Okay, gentlemen, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us here on Zoom this morning and uh, having your self prepared to get into the class this morning. And this is typical of the Monday morning of the first day of class. We got some people missing here, but uh, they typically filter in after they read their emails, answered their phones, and all that good stuff to be able to go and get into the class. So, first things first. If, Good morning. Before we get, hold on one second. The new one, yeah, that's the past year. That's Charles. That's Charles. Yeah, he's got the golf course. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, who is anybody can give me the definition of what hybrid means? Hybrid, as far as hybrid courses. Any idea? Some is in class and some is not in class. Yeah, some's in class, some is not class. So, we're, we're going to be running here at about 50 50. When I say 50 50, 50% of the classes are going to be. Uh, online and 50% of the classes are going to be out there in the training yard. Uh, let me get a quick poll here real quick. Who's living far away from the campus? Give me some distances here. Yeah. Ross, right. where are you at? Living in Hemingway. Hemingway. Uh, what else? I mean, we've had them as far as Orangeburg, Sumter, and all that good stuff. Florence, anybody from Florence? I'm from Dillon. Uh, I'm from Chesterfield. Okay. Chesterfield, great dad. Yeah, and this is uh, So what we try to do here is, and the way the format goes, unless weather inhibits us or we have problems or you know things pop up, is we'll do one morning of lecture. And when I say lecture, it's about electrical line work. And then uh, in the afternoon, you typically have an assignment or a quiz to do in the afternoon to fill out a day. Then the next day, we'll do full outside. So that's how we're breaking up the 50-50. We're not going to make you drive every single day all the way from that location for half a day's work out there in the field. If you drive to us, it's going to be a full day out there in the training yard. Is that understood? Save you a little bit of gas, uh, make, makes more quality time and uh, better use of our work out there. So who's, are any of you out there actually have your paper schedule with you? Yeah, no. All right, we'll, we'll work on Khalil here. You don't need to really uh, bring it up or anything like that. How confusing is that thing? It's a lot of classes on one thing. Yeah, it's a thing, it's a mess, isn't it? It's crazy to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, it's a zoo. So, uh, you know, and that's the way that you're using software over there and they're using that uh, stuff for classrooms and everything like that to be able to schedule classrooms and where to go and what to do. Look, guys, you can take that thing and throw it away. All right. Mm. Here's how it works as far as the schedule is concerned. Now, again, weather permitting, you're going to get about, what is it, Professor B, seven class days of ELW 110. That's all we're going to do is ELW 110 practical problems in mathematics. So within that period, you're going to have four quizzes, some homework assignment. There you go. Professor B's got the book. A homework, a couple of homework assignments, and then you're going to have an exam. Okay. For that one subject, ELW 110. So that's every day, ELW-110, next day, training yard. Next day, ELW-110, next day, training yard. That's going to go on for about seven class days. Uh, Friday is a half day. So we're going to have online that half day. We're not going to make you drive into the college. Once ELW-110 and those seven days are completed with you doing that in the college, you're going to get an exam for it. It is completely over. You have completed that course. So what do we do after that? What do we do after we completed ELW 110? 111. 
Now you got a one, 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 and then we just progress through every single one of those until we get to the end. That's ELW 231 is the last course in this program. There is a final exam at the end of all courses, and it pertains to safety. It's about, what was it, 25 or 50? For the exam? Yeah. For which one? For the end. Uh, 50. 50. Okay, 50. so it was a 50 question exam at the end. It was all about safety, but it had nothing, I'm gonna say nothing to do. <laughs> it was taught all through during the course. You guys would be very familiar with the questions that you're gonna see in it. But what you won't see at the end of all the courses is math questions. Because you've already done the exam for ELW 110. It's over with, you did that in the first seven days. So that, you can take those schedules, don't worry about it. It's too confusing. One, and I don't like, Professor B doesn't like either. I don't like to be teaching two hours of ELW 110, then an hour and a half of ELW 111, come back in the afternoon, teach you two hours of ELW 211, and then and that next afternoon, you know, it's too scattered for me. Confuses me in the process. I like to go math, get the math done, and it's completed and over with. Is it okay? Because I know I had a lot of questions about people with schedules. So right now, as we speak, Professor V just confirmed for me, Monday lecture, Monday afternoons, assignments and quizzes. Great. Tuesday, field all day long. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, lecture, assignments and quizzes, Wednesday afternoon. Thursday, all day field. Friday, is going to be um, lecture and online classes. Any questions there? All right, who's hurting for gas? Who's ha who has any kind of transportation? <laughs> uh, not me, I've got gas all the time. All the time. <laughs> uh, does anybody in a, in, a, in a pinch? There's everybody got gas, everybody got good transportation. Got him. You got him. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, Professor V and I are just going to give a little bit of background on ourselves. Go ahead, uh, Professor V. Yep. My, my name is uh, Professor Vermelin. You can call me Professor V, uh, Mr. V, Professor Vermelin, whatever you want to call me, um, other than my first name, unless we get real close and we might get real close. I don't know. Ooh. But anyway... Guys, I um I retired in twenty the end of twenty nineteen from Duke Energy, um, thirty two years, um in the industry as a I started out on the line crew guys, I worked over in Sumter for uh, about fourteen years, um then I transferred over to Andrews in Georgetown County, where I worked as a distribution area service rep for the remainder of my career for eighteen years. Um, where I did all kinds of stuff, guys. I did some engineering. I did a little bit of, uh, well, I did a lot of trouble calls. I did um, service work. I did anything and everything that needed to be done for that community. I was involved in the community. Um, I remember the Rotary Club there. I served that community uh, for the, you know, the last part of my career. And I have been here since the, the first September of 2019 is when I came on board here with Professor Shoemaker um, to teach you guys um, my passion, which is being a lineman. So we'll get to know each other better out on the field and on here. So, and I look forward to getting out on the field with you guys and spending some time with you, some one-on-one -on -one time and showing you, you know, the things that we've learned over the years. And, um, and I hope you, I hope you learn a lot. I hope you, suck up um, our knowledge together. Um, Professor Shoemaker and I, we have a lot of years combined experience together that we put together from um, where he came from to where I came from to kind of mix it up some so you can kind of get the best of both worlds and uh, make a good career for yourself. Agreed, understood. Well, my name is uh, Stephen Scott Shoemaker. I always go by the middle name of Scott. Uh, to friends and family, to y'all is Professor Shoemaker, <laughs> Professor Shoe, Professor something. 
Hey, I don't mind coach. I like coach. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty cool one. Uh, I worked, I started with Santee Cooper when I was 17. And I was with Santee Cooper for 37 and a half years. Uh, retired with them in 2015 as an area operations supervisor. So I was supervisor of supervisors of the line crews. Excellent company to work, to work for. Uh, let's see, I've been here at the college. Give a little, little history on the college on, on this too. Uh, while I was working at Santee Cooper in my last year of retirement, uh, last year of employment before retirement, I uh, approached the college here, Dr. Four, who's the president now. And I asked Dr. Four, I said, uh, you know, why don't you have a lineman program here at the college? Because at that time, at Santa Cooper, we were starting to hire a lot of employees from Trident Tech, and Trident Tech already had a uh, electrical lineman's program. So Dr. Ford sat down and said, uh, give me the lowdown. What, what, first, what's a lineman? You know, they didn't know what it was, and I gave her examples. It showed her. And, uh, of course, that kind of morphed into, well, why don't you teach the program? So you're looking at the program initiator here, as far as Ori Georgetown Technical College is. And like I said, that's been going on since 2015 uh, to date. So I've been here, what, six years? Yeah. Six years. Six, six lovely years. Uh, like Professor Via just previously said, you're looking at the two of us here with about 70 years experience in the field. Now, you will notice through the courses, as far as terminology, slang language, that uh, there's a little bit of difference between me and Professor V. That's because of the difference in companies. And we will teach you those things. You know, some people call different things, different items, different things. Some companies have different work practices. We'll teach you those things too. Uh, I think one that sits here on the top of the list, and you could put this down on paper, What? And we're going to, what's time we're going to start tomorrow, Professor B? Nine? Nine o'clock. Okay. We started at eight this morning to get the ball rolling, really, and to get everybody that probably have problems getting into Zoom and whatnot. First day blues. Uh, we'll probably start at nine, to, nine tomorrow morning. What time do you need to be in the uh, at the field tomorrow morning? Who, who said nine? 8.30. Uh, well, yeah, that'll work. 8.30, 8.45, that Right around that time is good. Nine is late. All right? If you show up to my field at nine o'clock, you're late. Yes, sir. Because it's after nine. Okay? And uh, 8.20. Hmm? 8.20, you know, I'll probably be sitting on the field. I know Professor B and I will be up there probably about 8.30. Yep. With your stuff ready to go. All right. Don't be late. Okay. Don't be late. Uh, the, the industry hates it, does not like it at all. We don't like it at all. Okay. Right. So uh, that gives me a little bit of background as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I obtained a college degree here at Ori Georgia Tech in computer technology and obtained a bachelor's degree out of Georgia for computer science. Uh, I, it did pertain to the industry at the time, so I, I use those a good bit. And that's pretty much, let's see, how many? Been married for 40, golly, 42 years. Mm -hmm. Been married for 42 years, four kids, six grandkids. You'll be there one day. God bless her. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so that gives a little bit of background on me and uh, like Professor B said, it, it, you know, online, it's good. It's good to get the point across, but we guys get out there in the field. It becomes a little bit more personal and uh, you guys will be a brotherhood out there. It, it'll turn into a lot of teamwork and, and friendships and all that that's going on out there at the field. It, uh, it's a good time. Yeah. With, with me saying good time, look here, we're not, our purpose and you know our mission statement, we just had a meeting with uh, a lot of different utility companies out here. Our mission statement as far as to them and to you guys is, we want the companies to have a candidate that is able to walk into the workplace. Let's say you're gonna walk into the 
Line Crew Operations Center of St. Pete Cooper. And they're gonna give you a uh, course in CPR. And you're gonna walk out there on their truck and a guy's gonna look down at you and say, get me a hand line and a MD6 crimping machine. And you're gonna know what you do, what to do. You're gonna know what a hand line is. You're gonna know what that crimping machine is. Really, they want somebody that's on their feet that knows what to do the first day of the job. That's our purpose, right? Knowledge of the job, knowledge of what you're doing, and safety. Safety is paramount in the program, okay? Uh, take a guess. Let's see. We'll call in somebody here. Mr. Embry. Yes, sir. How much do you think it costs a company to train an employee to be able to do line work? Guesstimate. Million dollars? <laughs> no. Right? Off, no. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was getting paid that. No, uh, I mean, right. It, it's going to take a certain amount of training for a brand new employee for them to be able to start working on a line crew. Any guesses, anybody? Probably like 30,000. That's close. 64. That's high. Guys, it, it takes Ooh. between anywhere between fifty and fifty-five thousand dollars. That's in training and time lost. Time lost that you're not working, training and materials for them to bring you up to the speed of I'm confident to go ahead and put that person on a crew and start working them. All right. Our purpose is is and they're very happy for it. No, all that's gone. As soon as you walk into the workplace, you're working right away. Saves them 50 grand and costs you, what, $5,500. I don't know how much it's costing you yeah. to uh, take care of that. So that, that's our purpose. The other part purpose is, and uh, knocking on a little wood here, the program's been going on for five years. I have not heard of an accident of one of my employees or one of my graduates that's now an employee of utility yet. We want you to come home to your family, to your friends, to your loved ones with all your fingers intact, okay? And you guys in good, healthy shape. That's our main purpose right here. You guys keep safety at the top priority of what you're doing as far as out there on our field, anything that you do in your entire lives. <clears throat> if you see something that you feel is unsafe and this carries on to the workplace, if you think, man, I don't know if that's 100% safe and what I'm doing, ask. Okay? Ask somebody. Ask Professor Shoemaker. Ask Professor Vermelin. Is this okay to do? All right. Is this all right? And then we'll discuss our way through it. Are there any questions there? All right. Uh, let's see, I had something else right here. Okay. Uh, remember, safety, top top of the list. Professor, Bean, anything else you'd like to add on that? Um, yeah, you guys, we, we'll do a lot on safety. Um, we'll hold, you know, little safety meetings. We'll, we'll let you guys conduct the safety meetings. We'll give a couple examples this week. Um, on what we're looking for, these kinds of things. And then um, whether you want to do, you may want to do a safety meeting out on the field before we start climbing. That's great too, because that's what's required in the industry. But, um, and we'll get more into that, but uh, safety meetings are crucial to what we do. Yeah, it, it, it's very simple guys. And it's got, it's gonna to pertain to the industry or any of the industries that work out there as far as construction is concerned. Find an article or a YouTube video Know your subject matter. I mean, watch the video yourself and know what the information is inside of it. Present it to the class. What does it last, five or 10 minutes? That's all. Yeah, that, that's all it lasts. And if uh, be prepared for any questions that come along with it, not only from us, but from other class members that are out there. It, uh, there's nothing to it. And we'll more than likely do like we did last time, just go alphabetically. We'll discuss that more when we're outside on the field tomorrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is there anybody here, and don't be embarrassed to answer this, is there anybody here on a data restriction as far as cell phone data or internet data? No limits, good, good. If you run into a situation where you are limited on your phone data, if you're using your phone for Zoom, 
or any of that, or your internet data there at the house, uh, you can call your provider. And as far as I know, Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, uh, the major companies there, if you send them your college email address, you will get unlimited data. So if you want to investigate that, investigate that. Okay. All right. Good deal. All right. So let's talk here a second. Uh, who's got their books? For real. One. No way. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> Lucas and Austin, you guys have got you. Lucas. <laughs> Austin. Are y'all brothers? Yeah. Are you brothers? No. No. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Y'all yeah. look alike. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the first book that you're going to need, could you hold that up again, Professor V? Is Practical Problems in Mathematics for Electricians. Now, you can get those online. Here, here's my huge suggestion, gentlemen. You can get those online from the Barnes & Noble bookstore or Amazon. I would kind of lean towards the internet there to try to get your books if you want to get a... Uh, Hard copy book, they'll mail it to you. If you want to get an online book, get an online book. The bookstore books are expensive. You want to put it kind of. That's the first book we're going to need. That's going to be one of your assignments this afternoon is find the book, Practical Problems in Mathematics for Electricians, and obtain that book. Okay. All right. I do, and I don't know if it shows up on your screen, but I will let you know all of our uh, sessions here, as far as lectures are concerned, are recorded, and we have an ELW YouTube channel. So if you want to, if you missed something here today and you need to reference something back, what did he say uh, earlier this morning about books? You can always go back to the video and watch our videos on the YouTube channel. I'll bring that up here in just a moment. And there are a couple cool things that are going on there. Once uh, the video is uploaded and goes to the channel, it takes about an hour. And I notify you on remind of when all this stuff is happening. The, it's for one, closed caption. So you'll see the screen just like you're seeing right now or anything else that's presented on the screen. You'll have closed captioning to it. And there's transcription too. Uh, what's transcription? Write down, it writes down the words for you. Exactly. It transcribes every word that we're saying here. And you can actually search those. It's a note taker. If, if you just want to put it simply, you're getting free notes here just off of what we're talking about. So, and I'll show you the method of how to do it. You can go in there and you can search in the notes. Professor Schumacher said something about books. And you can click on search for books. It'll take you right to the spot where I said books and you can just read it right off your notes. Does that mean don't take notes at your house? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Take as many notes as you as you can and you will hear Professor B and I say repeatedly, put this down on paper. Take notes on this because it is vitally important that you do and it more than likely has something to do with a test or an exam. Something that needs to be taken care of right away. Anything you'd like to add there, Professor B? Nope, oh, that was good. Okay. All right, what time are we holding? We're well, looking at 834. 834? All right, guys, let's, let's take about 10. Uh, let's be back here about 845. Let's take a little break, get yourself something to drink, stretch your legs, and we will be right back. And we're recording again. Hey, Professor, real quick, was that the, uh, the ninth edition for the PPM book? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Ninth edition. Ninth edition. We might as well, while we're here, Professor B, go ahead and give. If you want to pick up all three, stand by. If you're working with financial aid and you want to pick up all three books at the same time, you've got the practical problems in mathematics. I'll throw this one up on screen here. Your next book, Electrical Studies for Trades. Yep. Okay, that is 
the fifth edition. All right. And then the last but not least. It's the guidebook for Lyman and Cableman. And that's the second edition. Correct. Out of all three books, gentlemen, uh, th this is pretty much, and it is a very good book, very uh, comprehensive, a lot of subject matter in it. Uh, this is one I'd probably keep forever. Okay. Even, even when you start your job, it's got just a ton a great information inside this book. Very good book to have around and use. Okay. Now let's, let's talk a little practicality here. As far as communications is concerned and my, my Dean and uh, our department chair are, are very proactive and we've done rather well. I, I think Professor V and I have done really well as far as you commu communication, the Remind Tech Service is your service to us, uh, uh, to put it shortly. If you need to get anything taken care of, if you've got something coming up, use Remind and let us know. I am 100% sure that somebody on the way to driving into the training course on a field day is gonna have uh, my kind of flat tire or my car broke down or you know something something's going to happen I, I can guarantee it or you got a family matter to take care of guys we're 100 percent with you look i we're going to be on you about attendance and we're going to be on you about being to class on time but if something comes up send us something in remind <clears throat> Do not text and drive but I'll give you a couple examples here, and I'm sure Professor B's got a couple also. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we tell you to be at the field at nine, and I get a text on remind from somebody, uh, hung up in traffic, there's a wreck on the bridge. Okay? It happens all the time. It happens, yeah, re regularly. All the time. Look, am I gonna count you late? Mm -hmm. Not if you reached out first. Not if you reach exactly. Not if you reached out first. Now I might go back and check. Is there really a wreck on the bridge? All right. And you know, <laughs> if if uh, and I'll pick on Jordan Clark here just because he's looking so handsome today. Uh, appreciate it. <laughs> All right. If Jordan if Jordan says on Tuesday, well, uh, I got a flat tire, and he says on Thursday, well, my car won't start. And if he says on the next Tuesday, uh, my battery's dead. And he says on the next Thursday, uh, I'm out of radiator fluid. You know, you get what I'm saying. You buy a new car. <laughs> got to, yeah. <laughs> He's got an excuse every day of being late. I, I'm probably going to, you know, have a little private talk with Mr. Jordan Clark. But things do come up. Okay. So if that does come up, and I like the way Mr. Embry said it, if you text me and I don't text you, say, hey, where are you? you're one step ahead of the ball here, okay? Uh, raise a hands or just verbally, who has a job? Uh, Ross, what are your hours, buddy? You ain't gotta worry about it. I'm gonna start working night, so I ain't gotta worry about messing with your schedule. Uh, that's not my question. <laughs> what's your hours? Yeah, what's your hours, buddy? Uh, my hours I was working right before I started this class was Monday through Friday, 7 until 7, 8 o'clock at night, whenever I got off. What are your expectations when you work now as far as while you're in class? Uh, I've, told, I've talked to my boss and basically, oh, I've talked to my boss basically and I'm just going to like, like I said, pick up nights whenever they need me and whatnot. It won't be all the time, but it'll be once in a blue moon. Yeah, look here, we don't want to run you guys into the ground is what I'm trying to get at. If you've got to, you know, you're going to have stuff you're going to have to do in the afternoons and evenings. So uh, keep me where, who else? Lee, did you say you had a job? Yes, sir. I only work on weekends right now, so I can take the class. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else that sees a conflict in hours? Nuji? 
Yeah, I do. I work 12, I work six to six. Um, I work at coastal Carolina, so it's a, it's a little bit crazy, but they're going to work with me on my hours. 6 PM to 6 AM. Yes, sir. It was 6 AM, 6 AM to 6 PM. Ooh. Yeah, see, it's a big conflict, but they're working with me. They're going to, um, I got a lot of annual leave time, so they're kind of trying to let me burn a little bit of that and then work a little bit of nights from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh -huh. So, okay. Well, yeah. He here's the deal, guys. And I the industry is the same way. You get an assignment, we're going to go through lectures. You please attend the lectures. There's a recording of the lectures. You're going to get an assignment, all right, to do typically every day. And that assignment, if it conflicts with your work, uh, let us know. Uh, you are in college. You signed up for college, and we expect you to get your work done in a, in a timely manner. But if something comes up and it's not working out the way you expected it to work out, let us know. We can see what we can do. The other part is, especially on the uh, online lectures and what's going on. We're gonna do an online lecture today and we're gonna give you an assignment today. It, it's nothing to it. We give you until midnight that night to complete it. So it's not a timed, uh, at 2 p.m. you're gonna get one hour to be able to do a quiz. No, we don't work it like that. All the assignments that we give after 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you have until midnight that night to complete them. And what, what, Professor V, nothing over 25 questions? Yeah. Yeah. You, sometimes you'll see some quizzes and tests with 10 questions. Some you see with 25. I'd rather give four 25 question quizzes than one 100 one. It just makes sense. A little bit, you know, there's more frequency and less amount of questions in those. And you still you get all the same subject matter that you need. Uh, with that, our last class was very proactive and they did very well. I, yeah. I don't know of an occurrence where we had to reopen a quiz for an individual person. I did not. Mm -hmm. But if something does come up, uh, like I said, use the remind service, let us know, hey, I lost electricity at my house. I, I couldn't do anything this afternoon. Could you reopen the quiz for me? D just don't let it sit there and get a zero. All right, be proactive, let us know. I wasn't able to do it for X reason. And we'll reopen that quiz for you because it's gonna you know, end at midnight, you won't be able to do it. So do let us know in situations like that. If you don't have a good reason and you just didn't let us know anything, every quiz day missed. So I give you a quiz today and it's due by midnight and it's not by mid done by midnight. On Tuesday, it's gonna be minus 10. And Wednesday is going to be minus 20. And Thursday is going to be minus 30. You get the picture right here. It's minus 10 for every day that you've missed that quiz. Is that understood? Okay, unless you give me a good valid, okay, see so shaking heads. Unless you give me a good valid reason of, of, of why that's going on. Again, remind is your friend. We use it extensively. Uh, you guys have the option of using that also. Anything you'd like to add there as far as quizzes and what not, Professor B? Um, just piggyback on what you just said about communicating. That's the, even out on the field, you know, there's, you know, four things that um, we push hard. The first one is safety. Two through uh, four is communicate, communicate, communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the key to everything. I don't yeah. care what you do, you just, just need to communicate and communicate does communicate to each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, not only to us, you'll see a lot of this going on when you start getting out there in the field and start working as teams and we're doing line work and construction. You gotta have it. Yep, key. Okay. All right, let me get this going here real quick. <clears throat> just so I can give you some instruction how to use it. Excuse me. Uh, 
I'm sorry, sir. I got a stupid repeat question. I just wanted to know that's the ninth edition of the uh, Practical Problems in Mathematics. Si, senor. Right there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Right, yeah. right, right there. No problem on questions, guys. You got questions. Now's the time to. Uh... Absolutely. Appreciate that, Nigel. Oh, yeah, I got a quick one. Go ahead. You said, uh, if we order it, how long, like, when will we have to have the book by if we do order it from Amazon? Uh, uh, hopefully tomorrow. Oh. Um, I was just going to say, um, if you live, I think it's in Horry County, you should have a book scholarship at the bookstore, and they should be free. What? The bookstore is free? Right, so we're going to go over our... Yeah, if you got financial aid or something like that, yeah, it, it should be. I'm pretty sure you should get like a book. Have it, yeah. For real? Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. Anita, financial uh, aid will pay for your books. You're not going to go into the store and pick it up for free. No, 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 what I'm saying is, uh, is uh, if you contact Miss Dove, um, there's yeah. like some kind of grant out right now for everybody's books. That you talking for. about that um gear grant or that uh gears? I forget. The, yeah, gear grant. Yeah, the gears grant. Yeah, I got a, a thing on my financial aid. It's called Ori Georgetown Tech Book Scholarship or something, and it was like seven hundred and eighty bucks. Wow. For the three books at the bookstore. Shucks, I need to call her real quick. Good information. There you go. Yeah, pass it on to everybody. Good job. Well, good talking up. about a book scholarship, go ahead and call Benita Dove. Does everybody know her number? She said. She said. Uh, I thought she said it was just for the tools, though. She no. did say it once. She did. Go ahead. Yeah, she said the Gears grant is for the tools, though. They're gonna pay, gonna do that within the first week of class. We're gonna all send out the money, the two thousand, but the bookstore credit comes from your financial way. I got a bookstore credit and the Gears grant. I think everybody should get it if you live in Horry County. I'm per, or yeah, 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 yeah most definitely you do. Yeah, yeah, County, yeah. yeah you got a bookstore credit with your with your with your financial aid, but the books ain't free, like you said. They're very expensive, but you could you could definitely like order them online, like you said on Amazon. But the Gears grant is for your actual tools, which is like two thousand dollars from the, from a company, whatever company we order them from. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's definitely something to call Vanita Dove uh, if you're interested. Professor B, let me know if you got that share screen. Coming up. Wow. It's coming up. I just lost everybody on the other screen. Okay. All right. You got it there? Yes, sir. Okay, gentlemen, what you'll doing, what we're doing here, and I'll send you this link and remind. This is part of the uh, ELW Electrical Lineman YouTube channel, and we do have our own channel. I got it. Yep, I've seen it. Uh, uh, yep, I've seen it. Okay, and you're looking here at a, a previous class, a class we had last semester. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's obvious by what you're seeing here on the right hand side. I play a lot of Destiny. So <laughs> what you're going to do, I mean, you can go closed caption if you want to, and you'll see that I'll just play a little portion. So you see you get uh, that. Now, follow this closely. And once again, I said we got this on video, so you can see it again later. All right, if you come down here to the three dots, you got, got it. Okay. Come down here to the three dots that are in the lower right hand side and you hit open transcript. It takes a moment to load because they're, uh, it's long. All right. You can watch the transcript at us as it is spoken. I have not read anyone from yesterday yet. That was all written answers. So I still have to. So you'll notice how that goes along. As far as that is concerned, you can select all of it and copy and paste it. Here's the typical thing that I see students doing and uh, what I do in the process also. If you leave this open and go up to the uh, web browser, excuse me, and hit these three dots up here on the side. Now, where's that? 
Yep, those three dots. And use the find tool. Uh, let's see. And just type in what you're looking for. Now, I saw a couple of words here, and I can't even remember what we we're talking about here. Uh, let's, let's try grading. All right, so I said that one time in my notes, and it'll take you right to where grading on that quiz yesterday. So it's a, in the browser, you have the search capability of, of searching the entire transcript. And really, those are your notes on the side. So I'll go through that one more time. Open up the video you had for the day. Hit the three dots down here at the bottom. Open transcript, which is already open right here. And let's see, any other words? That... All right, let's do this one, underground. That's what it was about. Now, I said underground 25 times and you can scroll through all the different cases where I said it. In underground, you're working with utilities, both your utility and other utilities uh, for underground cable, underground cable, all right? Y'all underground secondary, Y'all get the concept of, of what's happening here. Any questions on that part? And once again, I, I'll send you the link to the channel. Please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notifications of when those videos are up. 99% uh, of the time, I send a remind text to let you know they're there, but. Uh, if you want to get notification, hold on one second, close the door. If you want to get notification without me, you can use that uh, feature also as far as YouTube is concerned. All right, any questions there? All right, good. I'm going to unshare there. Okay. All right, I'm going to do something here real quick. Mate, but we want to work with you now. We want you to get it now. And the only way if you don't get it is to ask questions and let, let us feel, let us walk you through it. Right, right. I mean, we, we work on the concept. Our minds work together with Professor B and I is there's no man left behind. Exactly. Uh, and uh, don't be ashamed if, if you want to talk to us privately or publicly to saying, I'm just not up to par with what you're talking about, Professor Shoemaker. You can give me a hand, okay? Uh, that with that, when it starts to get in the overhead construction portion and we're doing climbing and whatnot, guys, it's, uh, I'll just put it simply, some are naturals. They're, they're walk out in the field, they put a pair of climbing tools on and they're climbing like a squirrel. Some people are not. Look, look here, don't be afraid. Now I'm 61 years old, Professor B, you're how old? 58. 58. We climb every single day. I enjoy climbing. So yep. if you get in the process of what we're climbing out there and you're just not feeling comfortable with it, say, hey, Professor Shu, Professor V, come climb with me. Show me what you're doing, All right? We'll have training, obviously. But if you're not catching on with it, if you've got a fear of heights or climbing or being on a set of hooks, we'll get you through it. Yep. Don't wait. And Professor V said something vital there. Don't wait until the last minute. Yeah. I don't know how many students, it, it's not a lot. Yeah. You know, it, it's one or two per class that get down there and, you know, the last week of uh, overhead practice and then the uh, week of uh, overhead construction exam. And I mean to tell you, it's at the zero hour. Uh, I'm not feeling too comfortable about doing this or I haven't done any crossovers yet or I, I haven't changed a cross arm out. Guys, we have got 10 weeks, and I will tell you, when do you think we're going to start climbing? Probably tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. My thought processes are here, and Professor V, I, I, I'm, he's totally on board with this. Look, you got to learn how to climb before you learn how to build. Okay? I got it. Okay. We're going to teach you climbing processes and climbing techniques there. They're going to make you guys good climbers. Then we're going to learn how to tear out cross on sag wire and iron transform. Okay. Uh, I, I will let you know. I, I don't want you. To, you guys look 
99% healthy out there. All right, it's going to turn into summertime. The heat's going to get up. Pace yourselves, but do not be the guy that sits on my tailgate. All right, don't be the guy that sits in the back of my uh, back of your vehicle and drinks a soda and sips on his water and walks around the field and picks up stuff and kicks rocks around. Keep a good pace. Climb as regularly as possible. Now we have how many sets of tools, Professor? 16, well, with ours, 18. We've got 18 sets of tools, and we'll let you use our tools until your tools come in. So we're going to start climbing tomorrow. But stick with it, stay at it. Who's, and we might as well just throw this out there. Who's climbed before? Has anybody climbed a pole before? The tree climbing. Tree climbing? All right, for a tree climbing? Yes, sir. I, mean, I worked for Mr. D's for a little bit. I hear you. Anybody else? I've done climbing with uh, scaffolds on uh, at power plants. Okay. Okay. So you know, those goes up to 50, 50 feet, you know. All right. Fall protection. Mm -hmm. how, well, how many hunters do you have in here? Okay. Uh -huh. tree, stand, tree stands? Yeah. Climbing trees. Okay. Look, don't be embarrassed. And if you want to, catch me off to the side. If you've got a problem with heights, let me know. We'll work our way through it. I've had some people that have gone up 10 feet and completely locked up. Okay? When the class is over, they were good climbers and good linemen now. We'll work our way through it. Okay? Uh, anything more you'd like to add on, on that part? I, the, I can't stress enough, Professor V, is get some tools on go to work. Yeah. Okay? Uh, there's, another, there's another aspect of that. Does everybody know where our training yard is? Yeah. Okay. If you come to the Conway campus, it's the field closest on the Myrtle Beach side. All right. Uh, Professor V, off the top of your head, how many visits that we know of did we have from companies last year? Oh, my. Uh, more than I can count on both hands. Yeah. yeah. I'd say at least a dozen companies visited us on the field. That's not counting the people that drove up to that side parking lot we didn't know about. Companies, when you get on that field, companies are watching you, okay? So uh, they're watching you do your work, they're watching you climb, they're watching to see what you're doing in your spare time. When I say spare time, it's not really spare. Uh, I, I, I use uh, Khalil right here for an example. Uh, they're going to call me up and they're going to say, uh, who is that guy in the brown shirt that's got those pork chop? That's got that pork chop meat out there. And, you, know, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say that, that's Khalil, Khalil Buffet. And, and that guy, that person's going to ask me, well, what do you think of him? I say, well, he's climbing every day. He's doing a good job. Seems like he's going to be a good student. I cannot release grades. I cannot release your attendance information. That's private to you. But I can sure give them information as far as your work ethic, your motivation, your initiative, <clears throat> the quality person that you are out there. Hey, Professor. Yes, sir. If we're if we uh, if we give the authorization for that information to be given out, is that a possibility too? It is, but it's specific to the person that you give it to. There is information. You bring up a good question. I'll go ahead and get into it now. There is specific information that you can give to an organization. So let, let's talk, uh, and I'll just throw a company out there. HTC comes out and says. I need to get the grades for Ryan Embry grades and attendance information. You're going to have to fill out a form, submit it to the college, and then it's going to be to one specific person. Typically, it goes to the HR person of that company. Right. All right. So now when that HR person requests your grades and attendance from the college, they have the legal authority to do that. All right. That's only for that one entity. Say so you go to work for Spectrum, you got to do it again. Okay. Now, he brings up a good point. Mr. Embry brings up a good point. Typically, this happens towards the end of the course or after you, right before you graduate from the course. All right. Uh, I'll use Mr. Spencer Wall here. All right. Spencer 
uh, a company calls up and says, Spencer, I need to get uh, your grades and transcripts for there. Your grades and attendance for your course at ELW. And Spencer says, no. What do you think that company is going to think? Yeah, he obviously didn't do so well. He doesn't yeah. want to be here with us. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it, it's, it's a good thing to do. Now, is, I kind of liken it to the way the Highway Patrol stops you on a DUI, right? They stop you, they suspect you of DUI, they want to give you the test, and you say no. Well, what, well guess what happens? Thank you, Mr. You're guilty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You're guilty. That's, that's the same kind of concept that goes on here. But me, as a professor, and I'm not going to request it from any one of my students. I've never requested it before. I will not give out your grades and attendance. Professor B will not do the same thing to any entity, even your parents. All right, that is private to you and you alone. I have had parents call me up. How's my son doing? I give you the same information. Doing great in class. Good motivation initiative. You might have missed three days. I'm, I can't say that. Okay, because I understood with everybody. All right. Uh, where was I before? I, I lost track of that, but I was good information, Mr. Ember. Oh, back to the companies are watching you out there, guys. Okay, 24 7. And I mean, I there are some cases I don't know when they pulled up, but they've got my cell phone number, they've got my office number, and they'll call me up and they're going to say, Well, who is that guy in the green? Uh, jacket or green shirt there that had the red, white, and blue colors that yawns a lot. Uh, yeah, that was Lee Martin. Yeah. Right? And well, what was he like? Okay, uh, I'm just going to give him that information. That's, that's how it goes out there in the field. To be honest with you, they're farming. Uh, what was it? Lee Electric came in and hired 11 off the field in the sack of her fingers last, last semester. Walked out there, I need, I need 11 guys. Okay. So that's uh, that's how it works out there in the field. All right, what are we looking at? 9.20, we've been here for a minute. Let's be back at uh, 9.30. Let's get, take about 10, take a break so Lee can get up and walk around. Hey, Randall, can you hear us? You see that? coming no blue screen yes sir you see the uh, blue screen or what do you say blue, uh, blue screen hgtc you see the hgtc website negative wow. maybe i hit the wrong one there it is whoop there it is okay this is on the Ori Georgetown Technical College website and it's uh, under important dates. You will notice here, we are full summer. Uh, classes started today. Ending last day of class is July the 30th, but exam week is August 2nd through the 5th. So the way we're teaching here is we're giving you exams at the end of each course, not at the end of the program, Go ahead and think of your last day as being August the 5th, as we will be teaching through that period and giving an exam at the end right there. On, it should be right around the 4th or 5th. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. Okay. So what were we, what were we talking about outside, Professor B? Uh, which one we talked about? <laughs> <laughs> well, we might as well talk about, you know, because it is coming up tomorrow. Uh, and a couple things here. Uh, COVID-19, are you required to wear a mask out in the field? No, not out on the training yard. We ask that you do maintain some separation out there in the field. We like the six feet of separation without a mask. Obviously, you're going to be talking with somebody else. Just don't be in their grill, swap and spit, okay? Um, be respectful of the other person. If you do want to wear a mask, of, of course, go ahead and wear a mask. I, I can guarantee you climbing a pole in a 100 degree temperature with a mask on is not gonna be nice. 
but masks are not required out there on the field. If you feel sick for any reason, do not, do not come to the training yard. All right. Uh, send me a text on remind, let me know I'm not feeling good today. Go ahead, Austin. I thought Austin had something to say there. Uh, do not come to the training yard. Text me and let me know what's going on. Professor V and I do not need to know exact information if you want to put it that way, this way. Um, just let us know I'm sick. I don't need, we don't need to know what it is. We just need to know that that's the case. Uh, if you do, if you do get sick and you do test positive for COVID-19, again, do not come to class. We need immediate notification. So send me a text or Professor B a text on the Remind service. Let us know. There's a protocol we have to follow with the college, and then the college will be in contact with you about that. All right. If you suspect you've been exposed to COVID-19, that's kind of an iffy situation right there. Uh, direct exposure. I would probably let somebody know, you know, Professor V or myself know that I've been directly exposed. You're calling that guy. I, I would probably take a day there, 24 hours to, and let us know what's going on as far as that's concerned. You know, of course, the biggest thing we wanna do here is if, you, if you've been exposed, if you got COVID-19, uh, if you're sick, don't come to class, okay? Uh, depending on the timing here, this is a condensed course, and it, I can guarantee you that we're shoving a lot of information that's typically done in 16 weeks into 10. If you miss something in your classes, and Professor V, help me out on this one right here. Yep. We'll do all we can in our efforts to get you back up to speed. Right on. I, I can guarantee you a lot happens in one day, and yep. you can miss a lot in one day. Yep. All right, that's why we make the recording so you can go back as far as the lectures are concerned. Out there in the field, if you know you missed a day, get with Professor V and I on the next climbing day and say, what did I miss? All right, and we'll work directly with you. We have had students that have been away from the classes seven, we had one away from the classes, away from the class 10 days. Yeah. All right, and we'll, we'll talk attendance and the, the requirements there in just a minute. But he had the motivation, the initiative, catch up, catch up, catch up. And he did. Okay. So if you miss days and you want to kind of stroll in my class and kick rocks, that's, that's your life. If you miss days and you say, hey, I need to catch up, we're there for you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bounce back to the Remind service real quick. What, what are the hours on the Remind for, for you, Professor V? Uh, we start till about 4, 4.30, maybe 5. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably, we'll respond to texts as quickly as we can on the Remind service from 8 to about 6 o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Uh, e even at that, even after 6, if you text me and you know something's coming up, I might not, or Professor V might not respond immediately. We still have a recording of the text. So it shows the date and time that you sent it, uh, use it. We might not answer real quick. I think I had one person text me at 940 last night. Uh, did I answer it? No. Yeah, I, I was too busy playing Destiny. Uh, <laughs> but I just, you know, I thought that person, well, I've got a recording of it. I'll, I'll just get in touch with them next morning, okay? So uh, there are hours. Now, you run into an emergency, text us, let us know. At least we got that information. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I say these things in, if it was me and Professor V, if you're in good shape, we want you here all the time. Yep. You know, your class hours are your class hours. We want you here on time. We want you here all the time. Yep. But we know there are bumps in the road that you're gonna experience out there. If you hit one of those bumps in the road, and you know, I'll, I'll give the guy's name, Tariq. Tariq was in my last class. His mother had cancer, got diagnosed with cancer. Uh, he had to make some trips to the hospital. But I'll tell you one thing, buddy. He took about six days off total through the entire program. But when he came back that next time, 
boy, he was pedaled to the metal to get caught up and get things done as far as he's concerned. And he walked out of this course with all A's. Yeah. So uh, he had the initiative. If you, if you do the flip side of that, if you want to drag your feet, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's just not going to happen. Okay, so attendance and tardiness. You're allowed to, in ELW, and I, I don't like to give out these numbers, but it is true. You have to maintain an 80% attendance rate. So what does that mean? How, how do I figure attendance per course? ELW 110 is two credit hours. So if I take my, and here's a little math for you on the first day. If I take 80% of two credit hours, that turns into 1.6. 80% times two, 1.6. You're allowed to miss 1.6 days of ELW 110. Uh, you might as well just go ahead and say two. That's one and a half days you're allowed to miss two. If you miss two days and those days are not made up or they're not for some reason kosher with Professor Vermlin and I, you're dropped from the course. That's just, that's just plain and simple. You got to maintain that attendance. The rest of the courses are three credit hours. So eight times three is 2.4. You're allowed to miss two days out of those also. We're not going to consider that second day unless you've got a good reason why they're missed. Attendance is vital. This is really out of our control. We're taking attendance, we're putting it in the records every day. And it comes down to the end of the course. And uh, United 80%, well, that's, the college has got that, not us. That's what's in your records. So, so be it. Professor B, anything else you'd like to there, add there as far as attendance and tardiness? Three tardies, three lates equals one missed day. Professor B, anything else you have to add there? Guys, just work, treat this class kind of like you cheat a job on time, come to work, come to class. Um, that's what we expect. That we, we, we want you to kind of treat this, especially, well, all of it, online and out on the field, just like you're going to work every day. That, we want to get you in that groove, in that mode of, you know, going to work. So um, be on time. Yeah. All right. Uh, when you get out in the field tomorrow, water, yeah. In your coolers, in your ice, guys, you're on your own. We, we used to be able to share a big cooler and get waters out of that for guys. We can't do that with the COVID restrictions that are going on right now. Bring water. Don't drink sodas. Don't drink anything dairy. Bring water in a cooler. <clears throat> do not steal from Professor B's truck. <laughs> for some reason, his cooler was the uh, master cooler for the entire class. Yeah. Bring your own. And I use his also. Bring plenty of it. You'd be surprised of how much you're going to sweat off out there in the field. Yeah. Hydrate. Hydrate. Hydrate plenty, especially this time of year in those yeah. situations. Yeah. All right. Okay. What's next on the CDLs? CDL. Is a CDL required for the job that you're going to get? Yes. Yes. All right. Anybody uh, who, I might as well, we've had some before. Has anybody got their CDL? CDLA. No. <laughs> no. Al Wilson? No. No? Okay. I think uh, Lennon, had, Lennon is working on his right now. Right. All right. A CDL, we don't have enough time either in the spring, fall, or summer courses to teach CDL. That's a separate course because we have to get through our courses in the amount of time that we have. A CDL A license is required by the organization that you're going to work for. Now, this is going to make a short story long, guys. It depends on who you go to work for. Uh, does anybody know of any organization right now where you can go ahead and start working for that organization and they will train you and get your CDL for you? Maybe Santee. Santee is still in the process. They're getting ready to discontinue. Anybody else? So here's possibly Ori Electric. Poss well, possibly Ori Electric. And you're bringing up some great companies, company names. We just had our advisory meeting with what six different companies? Yes. 
here's what's going to be happening. The expectation is organizations, companies will not be able to give in-house training for CDL starting in June of 2022. All right, so that means you as Lyman, future Lyman, are gonna have to have a full CDLA prior to working for that organization. It is a requirement in all of these organizations that you're going to be working for. As it sits right now, and here's how I've been doing the training, for, I mean, the uh, instructions for the classes, and this helps you guys in the long, long run. You guys, and I give a, it's a substitute grade. I'm asking you by the end of this course to get your CDLA permit. All right, does anybody know what's involved in getting a CDLA permit? Nobody. Um, taking okay. a quiz, basically? All right, you're going to have to get a CDL DOT physical. Once again, this is recorded, so you'll be able to come back and, and watch it later. You're going to have to get a DOT physical. Do not, do not get a full-fledged physical. That costs about $150. A CDL physical is going to cost you about $60 to $75. It's going to cut that in half. All right. Once you have the physical, there are plenty of study guides out on the internet. And we're going to go back to what Nuji did, uh, Nigel just said a moment ago. You're going to go in and you're going to take a written test, quiz. What was it, 50 questions? It's, a three, it's three parts. Three, part, three parts of and I'm not really sure. Is it 50 per part? I think, I think it's three parts of 50 questions a piece. Yeah. Those actual batteries of questions are on the internet. You just don't know which ones you're going to be getting. Take that written quiz and you've got a CDLA permit. A couple of benefits here. One, it's a substitute grade for your lowest grade anywhere in the course. So if for some reason you made a 70 on something, that's your lowest grade. It now became a 100 if you've got your CDLA permit. Two is the organizations do know and they understand, look, we're training in house right now, but that's going to end in 2022. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, Lucas McDowell here. Lucas McDowell walks up to me and he's got a CDLA permit. Well, at least I know he's begun the process. He knows the basics, he's got his permit. I'm gonna train him in my organization he's more than likely gonna get a CDLA driver's license, okay? It, it's a little bit of an icing on the cake if you walk in there with a CDLA. I can guarantee you, a lot of your organizations will not touch you if you don't have the permit at least. Agreed, Professor V? Exactly, that's, you get your CDL, that's gold. There's a, um, a lineman, side on Facebook of course there's a lot of them where they're looking for lineman jobs and I've looked at a bunch of them here the past few weeks just to see what they're where the locations and one of the main things they are searching for are the CDL that is gold mm -hmm. that'll get you a job just about anywhere all right so I mean it's all fine and dandy if I was able to give you a CDLA full CDLA driver's license to get you out of this class, man, it would be sky's the limit. Yeah. I can't, I don't have enough time. So I'm encouraging you, you one is to get the CDLA permit at yeah. least. It substitutes a grade and gets you on the road, all right, at least to get in the CDLA license. I, I know from my, our advisory meeting, they won't touch you if you don't have a permit at least. Yeah. So get your permits. Uh, I'd say probably after all said and done, $150 involved in that. Yeah. Physical testing, the test is going to cost some money. So do that. And you've got from now until August the 5th to, do to get that taken care of. But don't wait. But don't wait. Yeah. All right. Start the process now. All right. So uh, who did I pick on for four? Lucas. All right. So Lucas, Lucas got his, hey. Professor, I, I need to knock off about three to go get my physical. What am I going to say? Take off. Step to the back of the truck. Uh, Austin Langston calls me up and said, I got, and you got to call the DOT to schedule these things. Austin calls me up and says, I've got my uh, test scheduled for eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Great. All right. It's part of the course. Just let me know what you're doing. 
That's, that's not time away from class. So get those taken care of. It's, it is hugely important. And like I said, if you have the opportunity now, this is post course, this is after the course is complete, the college does offer a CDL, full CDLA in the college here, fully paid. All right, so that's the truck, the driving, the uh, written part of it. Uh, they do have scholarships within that. It's through continuing education that you can get your CDLA and not spend a penny on it if you want to go that route. Do you know now, how long that course is, Professor? Five, again? <laughs> five weeks. Five weeks? Five weeks. You can't do it, can't do it concurrent? No, no, we don't have enough time. Now, we're working on it. They're working on it, but you've got to consider we are, as far as schedule is concerned, eight to five every day, and then eight to 12 on Fridays. They are looking at Friday afternoons, Saturdays and Sundays, but that's, the, I can tell you one thing, that's pushing the limit for one thing, plus yeah. it's gonna take you longer than five weeks. Yeah, I wouldn't, what if, what if I'm willing to do it? Would it take me, what, what, what can I sign up for now? Yeah, we'll put that information in D2L. We'll talk about D2L in, in just a moment. Okay. okay. All right, so CDLs, it's kind of, I've, I've taken the temperature of the industry out there and do believe Professor Rimmel and I talk with the industry every day. I've taken the temperature of, of them out there and I'll just use Spencer and Lee here for an example. All right, Spencer comes out of my course, he's got all A's. Lee comes out of my course, he's got all A's. I'm considering climbing, all that kind of good stuff. And Spencer and Lee are just an apple and an apple. They're both comparable, both excellent people right there. Spencer has got a CDLA and Lee Martin does not. Who do you think I'm gonna hire? Spencer. There you go. Okay, that's almost a guarantee in every organization. So that, that shows you the importance of it, okay? Not to say anything against you, Lee. I'm sure you're gonna get yours too, okay? All right. Anything else on CDLs, CDLAs? And once again, I'll post that information in D2L. Okay, so while we're discussing it, and we discussed D2L just here just a moment ago, who has logged into, and I can tell, who has logged into their D2L accounts? Adam Bythway, Nuji Holmes. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be able to tell if you have or not. Uh, I got to look. I'm pretty sure I have. Okay. <clears throat> and, I, and if I haven't, I can always go do it. All right. So I'm going to share a screen here, and we'll go through the process of, of doing it. Now, this might be a timing thing. Let me know when you've got that share screen. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. This this might be a timing thing for I think Bythway said he had accessed it and it because it opens up at a certain time for us. You'll notice down here uh, I'm logged in and my last login time was this morning at eight ten a.m. None of the other students has accessed it, even though you say he did, which I understand that happens sometimes. So I will be able to tell when you access, and see Jeffrey Martin shows him in already, but he's just not on the last access list. Okay, uh, then that shows the names of the entire class. So let me back out of this completely. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and do this. Let's sign out. My screen may be a little bit different from your screen, but as far as the procedure is concerned, it's all the same. You're gonna to go to HGTC. You're gonna click on WaveNet. My warp factor speed computer. You're gonna sign in with your username and password.
like I said, this screen might be a little, little bit different. All these tabs might be a little bit different, but you will have a tab that says desire to learn. Click on it. All right. You'll notice I have pinned the courses over here and you can do that later on through the process. I pinned all this semester's courses. You see this little waffle up here? Unless you've been to the college before and taken courses here before, you notice all of your courses are right here. So we are in ELW 110. Now here's the process that Professor V and I use to make things simplistic. The first page that you come to, what we call the landing page right here, is what you come to. This is where we post all of our news. So if we say we have a quiz, it's gonna be in here. Uh, you'll notice we've got ELW first day, class preparation and information, scholarship instructions, fuse chart and transformer charts. So all of that here is, right, is here right now. We're actually gonna add some more information uh, for you guys this afternoon, which includes the instructional packages for this course. And really this is, this is kind of the homepage for everything that you're going to be doing. Uh, tools, this art, like I said, mine's gonna look different because it, uh, I'm an instructor. You're gonna have your assignments. Uh, we use Dropbox to submit stuff and we use quizzes. It's a pretty simplistic thing here to do as far as following the instructions and following what you need to do to get things done. All right, so let me back up here. The first page where you saw me logging in and I had to put my username and password in. Guys, if you're not able to log in, either your username or password does not work, call tech services. I am not, I do not have the capability to change usernames and passwords. You have to call them and log in. So my WaveNet, and it should log me in automatically, I think. Yeah, I did. All right, so where you saw that username and password come up, you're unable to get in through that process and then get into T2L, you have to call tech services. Let me give you that information right now. Tech Central. And you'd notice what I did. I, all I did was just type it in. You can do an online chat over here, or they've got the phone numbers where you can make contact. All right. And I'll stress again if you say I'm unable to log in, call Tech Central. Uh, we're going to give an assignment today for you guys to log into D2L. If for some reason Tech Central is unable to help you, obviously send me something to remind working with tech services. Wasn't able to log in. All right, is there any questions there? Let me go back to this real quick. All of our uh, online quizzes and exams are gonna come through D2L. So I'm gonna go to my course. ELW110, mine's gonna look a little bit different because I'm the instructor, assignments, quizzes. All right, these won't be visible to you, but you'll see all the different stuff you got to do down here. And once we make those visible, you'll be able to do them. Any questions there? Okay. Professor V, anything you'd like to add on that part? No, oh, guy. Well, the only thing I'll say about the, the tech central part, if you're having problems, guys, it might be a little tough to get a hold to sometimes. So just be persistent about trying to get a hold to them and, and have patience. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. Okay. That's it. All right, so we went over what was uh, CDLs, we went over 
health issues, if there's any of them, We've gone over D2L to get into that. Books, we have that. Instructional packages, I would highly, once we have those in there and you get into your D2L, I would highly recommend you reading your instructional packages. That gives you the course outline of what we talk about. Okay, it's, it's a good outline and rubric as far as that is concerned to see what you're gonna be doing within each course. Uh, oh, Professor Bean, you wanna talk about parking passes and all that? Parking passes, yeah, guys. Make sure when you come tomorrow, at some point tomorrow or this first week, um, you get your parking passes and your student IDs. Uh, they are very, um, what's the good word for that? They are, they take and put a big emphasis on you having a parking pass at a rate of $35 uh, piece fines if you do not, if they catch you without a, being on campus without a parking pass. It, it, it's nasty. I mean, the first week, they understand. Yeah. They understand, well, you know, he's in the process of getting his parking pass. Oh, yeah, blah, 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 all that good stuff. But that second week, buddy, they're pumping tickets under your window. You don't pay the ticket, you don't get your certificate. Exactly. I, I definitely know that, sir. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, like I said, I work for Coastal, and your, Coastal, your HGTC, like your security staff works for our department and we 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 give out tickets at the same time so like yeah. it's, it's funny i know exactly what you mean i work for the security department no it, yeah it, it's harsh you, you know get the sticker in your window get it taken care of get your id all right professor v is when he's discussing this part i've thrown up the map of the conway campus right here we professor v and i if you see my mouse are located in building 300 you'll notice right here 1100 Right where you see that, let me see. A little red. It's about, it's, it's in the cafeteria. Just about, yeah, it's right beside it. Yeah. That little looks like sunshine right there. That's where you get your parking passes and your uh, IDs made. Well, I think they get the IDs made in the building ahead of that, right up above that, right? 1100? Yeah, parking passes are right below it, and the IDs are in the building up here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we get in tomorrow. Uh, let me know. Take some time. You need to go over here and take this, get this taken care of. Go ahead and get that taken care of. Yeah. We're, and show them where the field was at with that again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you want me to share my screen? I got it up. All right, go ahead. All right. Share. See it? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. All right, guys. Like he said, 300 there. This is us. Parking lot. And you'll see over across the little street right here across from Victory Lane. Um, there, we're right in here. This area right in here is where our climbing field is. This is where our outdoor lab is. Right. Golf, golf course is at this end, and we're on this end. Any questions about that? Highway 501 is in the front to the beach. Yeah, to show them that little pathway to drive onto the field with your mouse. Yeah, come, when you come in, if you can come in off either end from, uh, from Singleton Ridge Road or from the coastal side. Uh, just come in. Do not come in through the golf course side right here. Thank you. Thank you. There is a little parking lot you'll see a bin with some uh, mulch in it and all in this little area. Don't come in here. Come come through the middle of this parking lot and come in and you can park here or you can park on the field. You see we got a, a pole pile out here um, next to where the, the, the pole is already set in the ground. Just you can park out on the grass out here to keep from having to walk that far. But there's a couple of trees over here in this corner by the pond, and that's usually where we like to park, kind of under that shade. But um, that's where it's at. You guys got any questions about that? Okay. Security does patrol the field too. Yes, he Just does. To let you know. Okay. Uh, once per semester, Horry County does come out with the dogs. Ooh. Uh, uh, we'll discuss. All right, you, you know the deal. 
don't have uh, weapons, no weapons in your vehicle, ammunition, take it out. Uh, the ganja, get rid of it. Alcohol. And alcohol. So uh, they do a full parking lot inspection once a semester. So make sure your vehicles are clean of all that bad stuff. Don't have anything in there, e even spent ammo. Okay. Parking passes. That's the you got that part. What was in there? What was the other part? Parking passes and IDs and IDs. Yeah. Um. All right. Quizzes. That's done. Yep. Dress appropriately tomorrow. Uh, blue jeans. If you don't have any boots or any kind of hard sole shoe, you know, bring the best thing. They'll come out in shorts and flip flops. No. Nah. All right. Uh, wear something tomorrow that's kind of you're not worried about getting a little messed up. Uh, we've got all the safety gear as far as that's concerned, your climbing gear and everything like that. But but dress appropriately tomorrow, and they'll go through the college with some of those shirts that I've seen that just aren't very good. All right, I will let you know there are no restrooms. There's no there's no facilities out there at the field. If you need to leave the field and go to building 1100 there, just let me know or let Professor B know that you're headed over there to yep. take care of business. Once you go into that building, you do have to wear a mask. Yes. And do follow the safety protocols once you go in that building. If you don't have your mask, don't be rude to those people over there. Yeah, a couple of students that were kind of, yeah. Well, I just said kind of rude. Mildly, yeah. And uh, we got bad reports about them out there. Driving your vehicle onto the field or driving around onto the field, mm -hmm. drive like a normal person. Uh, it's not a, it's not a donut central out there. We had students that love to make, and I've got my little soft little ditch over there. We used to drive through, but not anymore. Don't be cutting donuts out there in the field and, and drive nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to open it up for just a second. Any questions thus far? Any any concerns, problems, whatever. Is there is there any uh, hidden like technology fees or software fees that we have to buy like after we get the books or anything? No. no. Okay. There is one in there and it's specific to the course. I don't know why I've got to buy a T I eighty five calculator. Don't buy it. Yeah. All right. We'll let you use your phone to make calculations on it. Obviously, I can see if you get the house using a calculator or not. But don't buy it. Okay. Okay. Uh, an another thing when we talk about that part. Uh, you know, when we assign quizzes, exams, and tests, and we, you know, in the morning, and you're there for you to do the afternoon, Professor B and I stay on Zoom until the end of the day. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we don't answer questions, but we can restate a question or talk with you about a question that you're stuck on and give you additional information and that's the way we put it we don't answer the question for you but we we can reword it or we can enhance your memory as far as that is concerned so if you, you know it's the same thing on every other test that you would have with us in class that we're available here for you if you've got questions about that some students have taken plenty of advantage of that right some students do not and they get bad grades so you know that's kind of a head scratching in that process Okay, any any questions on that part? Any other questions, Ryan? You come up with some good ones there. Uh, not off the top of my head right now. Okay, all right. If, if they come through during the course of this, please do let me know. Uh, our graduation rate is sitting right now at a 99.2. So we graduate 99.2 of our students. And our placement rate, uh, be totally honest with you, is a little bit down because of COVID. It was 89% uh, this last, uh, up, up to this point in time, but uh, COVID hit us a little bit there. We are noticing that the organizations are starting to open up a little bit more. They kind of locked things down because of COVID and they weren't hiring anymore. That That's that's going away. They're, they're starting to hire back. Santa Cooper just hired, what did he say, nine? Mm -hmm nine uh lee electric came by the field field they hired 11 in one clip uh has anybody heard any news have you talked to any friends saying well i you know it's, it's, it's just hard to get a job uh just about 
Everybody I know. <laughs> it's hard to get a job in, in this field. Specific to this class? Oh, specific to the field? No, I haven't talked to anybody specific to the field. Yeah, guys, it is as hard as you make it. Uh, you know, that's just about the easiest way as I can put it. When, question for everybody, when should you start applying? Before you graduate. Graduation. Start today. Soon as possible. ASAP, start today. Start doing at least some investigation into jobs. Uh, and um, we'll throw out some more information there. But look at the organizations that you want to work for. And remember, we're not electrical only. I've got guys that are in telecommunications. I got tower climbers that work for tower climbing companies. I got guys working for Grand Strand Water and Sewer. I got guys working for the city of Middle Beach. I mean, there's a wide scope out there of jobs that are available to work on uh, as far as ELW is concerned. Just think of it. What did they have to choose from before? They put out they put out a posting for 10 jobs. Who, who did they pick from? Who do you think I would pick? Somebody brand new starting out so you can mold them. That, that's one thing, okay. The other part was, and here's our thought processes years ago. Uh, if you worked on a farm, that's a good thing because he knew how to run equipment and he worked outside. If he was a landscaper, he knew how to use a shovel and he worked outside. And Robbie, anything else? I might want to go to contractor route, but only yeah. if they were there for a short period of time. I might look at a previous contractor. That, that that's true. Okay, and, and to look coming over, but that was it. Yeah. Right now, you've got a student that's coming out here. That's taking an ELW class. He's taking 10 weeks of his time. He's taking courses out here to college and he's spending his hard earned money or scholarship money or whatever he's doing. And he's working hard out here. Now that's the guy that I want. And that's the way companies are going to look at you. That's the guy that I want. Now with that, uh, I'm, well, I, yeah, I'm going to do it. Nigel, how old are you? Eight. I'm 27, about to be 28. And Adam, how old are you? I think Adam went blank on us. Ross, how old are you? 23. 23. Is there anybody in their teens here, Lee? Is there I'm 20. 20? Well, that's kind of surprising. We've got a little bit of older, older class that's going on here, which is good. Uh, what happens here, guys, is you start looking, especially at the younger gentlemen, they start looking for a job that's close to mom and dad. Okay. Uh, I, I really don't want to leave mom and dad's house, or I really don't want to leave. I want to stay close by in Conway. And when you start narrowing yourself like that, <coughs> somebody just threw in a chat, you are really narrowing the field down. Thank you, William. You're really narrowing yourself down to one or two organizations that you're going to be able to work for. Now, we've graduated 260 students thus far, right, Professor Vince? Yeah. Look, guys, 260 linemen capable people in Horry County is what they call saturation. Big time. Right? Luckily, in this last class, we had a lot of people from Pennsylvania and out of state, and they were wanting to move back to those locations. But keep your mind open that you might have to work Columbia, Orangeburg, North Carolina, Georgia. Uh, there's plenty of jobs outside of or in Georgetown County. Not to say that there aren't some here, but keep your mind open, not only in the skilled field that you're gonna be looking for, but the location of it also. Right. Okay. Uh, one thing I, I will let you know completely, once you start moving into the upstate of North and South Carolina, Wages increase substantially. Uh, what's Duke Energy starting out at right now, Professor V? Uh, they're starting at, in this class about 25 an hour. 25 an hour to start. Okay. Where does Santa Cooper going to start you? 1810. 1810. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm talking money here. Of course, there's benefits that are going to be involved. But if you want the money, you're going to have to go after it. Two is you're going to have to be tenacious. Don't 
think that the job is going to come to you. Now, I will tell you this. You start applying to jobs and you say, Professor P, can you give Bob a call at uh, Duke Energy and let him know what's going on? Yeah, we'll do that. Sure. Yeah, we'll talk to friends, we'll talk to coworkers, we'll talk to people that we work for or that we've met, and we'll definitely put in a good word for you if you're worth it. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, uh, if you're worth it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, do, do something like that. And we know a lot of people out of state. So, I mean, that the guy came from Lee Electric was kind of surprising. He came from Lee, walked onto the field, didn't know he was coming, said, I'll take 11 of your guys right now. I'll pay them twenty fifty an hour plus per diem, which was $75 a day. Does anybody know what a per diem is? Yeah. Okay. Right. Travel. Yeah, travel, gas, food. So you're getting $75 a day plus $20.50 an hour. 11 bang, just like that. Now, where's the work at? Probably somewhere out of town. Yeah, he was in Williamsburg. Okay. And he was traveling from Williamsburg. Then he was going to Charleston. Then he was going from Charleston. He was going down to Orangeburg. So he's moving around. He's working about a month at each location. But these guys are making jack, plus getting $75 a day. And if you find a friend to stay with, you pretty much can, you know, save what fifty of that seventy-five dollars and put it in your pocket. So be prepared to spread spread your wings a little bit as far as work is concerned. And, Professor, be anything you like to add there? Yeah, just uh, try to get out of the mode if you want to stay around. It's okay if you want to stay close to home, but. Like you said, the market's going to get saturated uh, unless they, you know, really open up a lot more hiring. But um, there, like I said, just look around. I mean, there's if you guys want to do some extensive traveling, Texas, Oklahoma, New York, all those places. I mean, they're paying for them plus big salaries to go there. Um, you know, don't don't discard anything. Look at everything. Yeah, I give a good example of a student I had. And this is probably last year. I told him the same thing I'm telling you today. Apply now. How many jobs do you think he applied for? Mm, none. 15. All right. He, fought, he applied for 15 different jobs. How many replies do you think he got back? One or two. 12. Oh. Okay, 12. Now he's, he's applying in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. He wants to stay on the East Coast. When you get in a situation like that, guys, now it's time to be picky and choosy. Okay. Yeah, that location fits me. Yeah, that salary fits me. Yeah, that benefits package suits me. You guys can farm them. All right. If I apply for Ori Electric today, and that's the only one I'm, I'm, I'm going to apply for, am I going to get a job anytime soon? Probably not. Do they have any open slots? There is. Yeah. All right. There is today. One. <laughs> okay. I got give you the right idea of what I'm talking about now? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Here now. All right. What time are we holding up supposed to be? Uh, 10, 15. Yeah, now I talk a lot. All right, guys. Let's take about another 10. Stretch out. Get you some water. Get yourself something to drink. We'll be right back.